Hello, everyone. I'm here. Okay, what a day we've had. I think it, a lot of people are coming off like that feeling of like a high. Right? Uh, yes, this is Sebastian. And then to find out, no, it's not. It's a bit of a uh, downer. But it's not, Sebastian, so we can't dwell on that now. We've got to keep moving on. And we've got to keep his name and we've got to keep his picture out there. There's nothing else we can do. So where do we go from here? Well, what got me? was, okay, I'm going to put it up, it's on my Facebook page, and Sumner County Police put this one statement out, okay. and I thought, that's not telling us anything, in fact, that's just telling us you haven't the lag, right? So let's see if I can find it. Here it is, right? And then they put this other one out. Literally hours later. Literally. Because I didn't see it till this morning, and I finished uh, live my live about half ten last night, and I was still online on my inter on the internet and everything till about gone twelve o'clock, and I never saw nothing else come up. So it must have come up after I went to bed, because then, and let's see with this. But this other statement put out by the law enforcement telling us that they had found the woman and the child and confirmed and even the mother of the child put out a statement, a comment on her Facebook page, which is now by hmm, any chance being deleted. She put a statement out, and I did share it to my page, just so everyone could see. This is the mother. Right? But she's now deleted it. Now, I only put that out this morning. This morning, I put that out. I went to check on it, what, about half an hour ago? On my Facebook page, and I thought, hmm, that's been deleted. In fact, there was two pieces of uh, work that I said, that had been deleted today. And I think the one was the other statement the police put out. Because I know I had both both their statements. And yet, I haven't got the second statement on my Facebook page. I've only got that first one. And I haven't got that statement, the mother, who they say is a, the woman. And it, it, I must admit, I've been on her page, I did check it. And I'm not putting a page out here. I'm not putting a name out for privacy reasons. And you go through, there isn't many pictures that I found. But the pictures I have got of her son, he is a spitting image of Sebastian. Spitting image. Right? Especially as he got older. As he got older. Like a little bit older, you know what I mean? It's a spitting image of Sebastian. <coughs> but I'm just puzzled why she deleted that post. Why did she delete that post? She wants everyone to take down any pictures of her son and all this law, but then she's deleting, putting the post out and then deleting it. Why? Why? I don't understand that, but 
everyone to their own, everyone to their own. So, and I must admit, I was a bit torn up when I had that final confirmation by the law enforcement that they had spoke to the mother and the child. Right. Because everyone was saying that first statement they'd claimed. That very first statement. Where was he? Mm. Where was he? Where This one. The very first statement they put out. And I thought, yeah, but you're not telling us whether you found the woman or the child, no, nothing. But then they did release another one. And I know I said it on my Facebook page, but that is not on there no more. And I know I shared that post that the mother put out. And that's not on there no more. So what's going on? Right, did the police tell them to take it down, not to share anything? Or is it because people can get onto a Facebook page? Well, you can just easily stop that and put it as private. Private. Private your page so no one can get on it, love. Right. Oh, just private your page, that way no one can get on there, no one can see your photos, no one can see your friends, and nothing. they can't comment, they can't do nothing. That's what I would do if I was that mother. Just private my page until it all dies down. Because it will die down, it will. And now, it's like, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Right. Oh. It's 72 days today that Sebastian has been missing. So where do we go? Well, we've got one positive, uh, well, not positive, but apparently firm sighting of Sebastian, which then turned out not to be Sebastian. Right? And people are going, well, that photo should never have been released. Right? And I'm thinking, but that mother had over a week to say something if that was her. Someone said, perhaps they're being on holiday and that they just going out for a day here and a day there. And she just got back home and found out that her and her son were all over the internet. I'm sorry, but you've got phones. You have internet on your phones. You have people phoning you who knew you. And say, did you know you're all over YouTube? Did you know you're all over Facebook? And you'd have family. You'd have someone getting in touch with you. So, I think they did track her down. And they've just told them. Just off the internet. And, but then, but then realised, hey, I'm getting a lot of people coming at me here. I haven't said nothing. I'll just check the page. Right, and she looks like the woman in the eye, in the pink or whatever colour it is, pink. Right. It is her, and it is her son. And so I'm going to stop there now, I will not show that picture again, unless something comes up about that picture, which proves us that this isn't all what it seems. So, I don't know. I don't think it is anything sus. I think it is a real picture. It is the mother of that child, and the child is hers. Simple as. I'm gutted. Of course I am. I am so gutted. 
right? And then today, I'm watching another YouTube channel, and I like to watch a lot of these travel people going around traveling or camping and things like that. And there's one guy I watch. I don't watch him that much, but I do watch him. And he had um oh a collie a collie dog where we used to take him on all these hikes, all these camping hikes, and all this stuff. But then he got another one for at home for his wife for company. But then after he got that ever second collie dog, his first dog died. While I was on holiday. Right? So, he's then been training, taking his second colleague, Bruno, I think his name was, with him on all his travels. Found out today, the poor dog has died. I'm sat here on my sofa in tears. I'm thinking, what else can happen today on YouTube? Come on, give us some good news. Give us a break on YouTube, please. Right? I'm just hoping for some good news tomorrow, like Adam Montgomery gets sent down for life and never gets to see daylight again. That would... Well, we know he's going down for a long time. He's going down for a long time, but... I just want it to be... I would have loved it to have been murdered in the first degree. But it wasn't, it's second degree murder. So you can't get the DP on that one. But you can get life. You can get life. So you'll probably end up getting a life sentence. But he's already doing like 30 years on one sentence. These weapons charges already. And he's got to be in court. The judge has told him, you will be in court if we have to bring you in, shackled up and chained to a chair, you will be in court. That's why I'm on tomorrow night at 5, well, 5 p.m. UK time, which is about what, 5, 12 p.m., 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Your, your time. Whichever, whichever you are, whether you're six hours behind or six or five hours behind. Something like that, I think we are. Yeah, you're behind. Right, so I'm on tomorrow from five. So until that, I've seen that one. And what I do, I'm not going to finish my, I'm not going to close my live down. I'm just going to run an interval, right? And I'll just keep the light open after that Adam Montgomery case, be it for half an hour or an hour. I'll just keep it running with like little ads here and whatever. And while I get something to eat and drink and all that lot, and then I'll be back on to talk about Sebastian. Right, now, what I will say, being as... That lag has been ruled out, and it's not Sebastian. I will go back to my original verdict, my original, my my opinion, my original opinion, which is on the Sunday night, he was in his room, or not, because I've heard things how they would make him sleep in the garage. I don't know how true that is. That's only from what the neighbours have said. So, but if that's the case, I think he wasn't in his bedroom. I think he was in his garage with that mattress. And the thud she heard. So Katie says, this is all coming from Katie. We've got no proof that this actually happened or was said. Nothing. We've only got her word. Right? That she heard that thud. And she shouted through to him, Was that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, Mum. Well, whatever you're doing, pack it in. Get to sleep. 
you know, I reckon that thud was possibly, I don't know, I don't know if he was in the garage or because my, the, my original thoughts was he, they had an argument. He bumped his head, right, somehow. They didn't think much of him. He's gone to bed, he's gone, he's gone to sleep. And then when she went in, she went to bed at 12. So this happened around about, I'd say about 10 o'clock, they've had this argument, right? Because he wouldn't settle down. He'd been, God, he'd been in sense, sensory lo- overload all day. You can't expect a child like that to just, oh, well, okay, we've had this fun day, I'm going to go to bed now. It doesn't work like that for autistic children. It doesn't. Right? Anyway, so I think something happened. He's gone to sleep then. Because she said, oh, oh I'm going to pull it up. I swear to God, I'm going to pull it up. I like to fit in this first interview because that first interview was over four, four, right? First interview, um, interview with Chris and Right. Right. I've got it here. Right. And we are going to watch this. Because I'm sure it's in this part of the interview where she says, about going into his room. Hi, Kathy. Hi, I got. Hi, I got change. And oh, Tracy, my daughter is in in chat. Hi there. Everyone say hello, to Tracy. Am I showing you up, Tracy? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're going to watch this interview because it's not so much, well, it is so much what she does, but also listen, not just, you'll see that duper's delight. You will see that duper's delight if you don't, can't get, I can't make it even bigger for you to see it. You've got to be quick. It's right at the very beginning. It's one, it's just as she asks her what, that first question. Right, and um, but I'm sure she even asks her on this interview about what happened on the Sunday to the Monday morning, and she gives her step by step whatever it was she did. So let's hold on, let me get my headphones on, otherwise, you'll get oh god. So, we're going to watch this. So, just watch. I know to watch as well the reactions and listen. Now, I've watched this oh, countless times now. <laughs> Probably know it word for word. But just watch it and listen. But listen more. Listen. Sebastian Rogers is 15. He was last seen by his parents on February 25th in Hendersonville. Sebastian has autism. And he's gone without his medication this whole time. And since then, authorities have searched by air, by foot, and on horseback. Helicopters, drones, and dive teams have also been brought in to try to find him. Today, his parents spoke exclusively to our Holly Thompson. She's live tonight in Sumner County. Holly, I imagine it was quite an emotional interview. 
certainly was. It is hard for any of us to imagine the emotions that this family is going through right now. But we know one thing is certain. They remain positive. They are holding on to hope that their son Sebastian will return home safely. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just don't want him to be okay. I don't know where he's at. Mom Katie broke down several times in the interview, but says her hope is strong that her son Sebastian will be found safe and return home. He's gonna walk through that door and this street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug him. Love him and stepdad Chris says it's been an emotional roller coaster that all started Sunday night, February 25th. Pretty normal. He was playing in his room um, when I told him to go to bed. He did. <laughs> um, he said, Good night, mom. Mom, I love you. Katie says she went to wake up Sebastian around 6 a.m. Monday for school and he was gone. Within minutes, Katie says she was on the phone with Chris, who was working out of town, and they quickly called 911. And he's not a runner. He's never run away before. Um, I don't know why. He, I don't know why he walked out the door. I mean, he's a good kid. He's not. He's not a mischievous child by any means. Katie and Chris say Sebastian is not on social media. While he loves to play Minecraft, they tell me he does not have any online capabilities. I asked if there was any reason he might want to leave. We've been combing over that day and even the weeks before he left, and I don't, I haven't been able to figure it out. He's um. You got time? I've got, I've got plenty of reasons. And he was joking. It's as if Sebastian vanished. No sign of him on any video throughout the community. Thousands of miles logged by law enforcement, canines, helicopters, even dive teams, and no sign of him. Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed. People pointing fingers at them. You're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view, and not assume what they know. It's just better to stick to the facts. Are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, myself, and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have anything that they've wanted, we have provided. What do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you right now? That we love you so much and we want you to come home and you're not in trouble. Now, Katie did tell me that even though Sebastian does have autism, he is a smart teenager. I'm going to have to try and find it on my page on my, in my videos because I know it, those videos came in four parts and there's about four or five minutes long each one. Right? And I know for a fact she said, when she got up in the morning, she went in and woke him up, and he was gone. How can you wake someone up if they're not there? She's now since changed it from an, in the other interview. She said, I went in to wake him up, and he wasn't there. He was gone. But on that first interview, I will find you. Thank you, SG. She did. I will find it and I will play it tomorrow. I'll clip it out of my, out of my video and just play that clip because I know she said it. And now I can't find it. But I know it's in one of my videos. So it's going to be going back to, to oh God, two months ago. Really, when they did that interview. So. And then, did anyone catch the Duper's Delight? Yeah, I'll play it again. I don't know why he walked out the door. Exactly. He didn't walk out the door. We know that. Stop. I, I, oh, I want to get that woman and shake her so darn hard.
and say, look, love, we don't believe you. He did not walk that. If he did, he didn't walk down the steps. He was carried the rest of the way. Trace, right. Tracy Ravenor, is that you as well as Tracy? Are you? Maybe you just changed it to your married name now. <laughs> she is hiding something. See you in here. By the way, everyone, Tracy Ravenor, that's my daughter in law. Say hello to her. Right. Um, I'm going to play it back. Ooh, I love this bit. I really love this bit about the kid. Just watch. You're thinking right now. I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. Mom Katie broke down several times in our interview, but says her hope is strong that her son Sebastian will be found safe and returned home. He's gonna walk through that door and this street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug him, love him and- Stepdad Chris Have says it's been an emotional roller coaster that all started Sunday night, February 25th. Pretty much. Oh, sugar, sugar. <laughs> I've got to go back. Okay. Well, I've gone too far. I'm going. Lauren Lowry, Sebastian Rogers is 15. He was last seen by his parents on February 25th in Hendersonville. Sebastian has autism. Just finally changed it after what two years, Tracy. That's bad. <laughs> SG, hello. Some may not like my opinion, but you help a mistake. That caused time to Sebastian, and she's breaking as time goes by. Yes, yeah. She, she has to know something more than, oh, he just walked out the door. She was the, the last one who saw Sebastian, the last one to speak to Sebastian. From the time I got back from the Texas Roadhouse, from the time he put, after he put the bins out, perhaps he put the bins out and then got shower or bath, whatever, got in his PJs. You know what I mean? So something after that, where the bins yes, happened. And she needs to talk now, 72 days. This is not on. If you've got any feelings, I'll put this out to Katie, if she is listening, or just get to watch this, Katie, do what you've been telling your son to do. Run. Run. Because I understand in a phone call that your other half, I won't, I'm not going to even say his name no more, I'm not even his Won't be sick, right? Your other half was on a phone call the other night or whenever, talking in another accent, and so they didn't have nowhere. They didn't have TV. They didn't have internet. They didn't have all these fancy phones. And all this stuff. You know what he's saying? From what I'm saying. I've heard it. I've been trying to find that interview, that phone call. He said, uh, because character here, right? he said, I believe Katie and Seth know more than they are telling. Katie, run. run as fast as you can. Because he's going to throw you under that flipping bus. I swear to God, he's going to do it, love. 
he will throw you into the bus. Tell him the truth because. Yeah, Katie, if you also hear this, please do a video. Show us you're okay. Not a phone call. We want to see you're okay. There's some, a lot of people are actually worried about you, Katie. A lot of people. So if this just gets to you, please. Even, it, even if it's a recording, if it's not live, just a recording. Show us you're okay. Be long. Only a couple of minutes. Just show people you're okay. Because... We have not seen hide or hair of you since we haven't seen you, we haven't heard of you. And it's getting to the point where someone's going to phone law enforcement to get a welfare check done on you, sweetheart. Yeah. Someone will do it. If I was in the USA, no, I'd be phoning law enforcement down there in Mississippi or wherever it is you are. Asking them to do a welfare check on you. I could. And Chris is saying he's protecting his wife. He's not protecting you, sweetheart. He's not. By him, you not by him not letting you talk. By you saying. Okay, you go you go online and you do all the interviews. I'm not going online. Okay, so you do. But you agreeing to let him do this for you and to speak on your behalf. So what he's doing? He's making you look guilty. We know you can. Christ, you're black belt. I wouldn't know to meet you on a dark night, but not knowing what you look at. So, please, Katie, if you get to hear this, do a short video recording, editing. Just let people know you are okay. And it's not okay to let Chris keep talking for you. It's not. But it's okay. And calls with certain YouTubers. Hmm. Yeah. This was in March. The phone call he'd done the other night. I don't know when that was. Not being able to find it. But he threw you and Seth under the bus. He's saying, I think Seth and Katie are more than they are saying. Right. Well, because in the end, he come out and said who he was. It's going on every web. We don't know if he's on. I don't even know if he's watching this live. If you are, give me a favour. Is there a big cliff by the side, by anywhere by you? If so, take a woman. Yeah, I believe, I understand. Jim, hold on, I'm just going to put some of these comments up. Start with that one. All right. So, yeah, Chris, just take a run and jump off a very high cliff. Because I don't even, to be honest with you, I won't, won't even watch a YouTube channel now if I know you are on it. I won't. If I thought Katie was going to be on it, I'd be watching because I want to see proof of life. But Chris, you mean nothing to me. You're that dirt that the snake, the snake's belly. You're the dirt that that snake's belly slivers across. You're not even the belly of the snake. You're the dirt underneath his belly. Uh, 
but yeah, people are getting worried about Katie. But anyway, I will find that clip, but I'm going to show you this clip first. Because I, I just love this bit. Okay. Uh, I'll start there. Sebastian will return oh. home safely. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. Mom Katie broke down several times in our interview, but says her hope is strong that her son Sebastian will be found safe and returned home. He's going to walk through that door, and this street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug him. You see him do it. Stepdad Chris says it's been an emotional roller coaster yep. that all started Sunday night, February 25th. Pretty normal. He was playing in his room um, when I told him to go to bed. He did. <laughs> um, he said, good night, Mom. I love you. Katie says she went to wake up Sebastian around 6 a.m. Monday for school, and he was gone. Within minutes, Katie says she was on the phone with Chris, who was working out of town, and they quickly called 911. And he's not a runner. He's never run away before. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he's a good kid. He's they kick it out. He's not a mischievous child by any means. Katie and Chris say Sebastian is not on social media. While he loves to play Minecraft, they tell me he does not have any online capabilities. I asked if there was any reason he might want to leave. We've been combing over that day and even the weeks before he left, and I don't... I hadn't been able to figure it out. He's, um, that morning he was laughing, he was joking. It's as if Sebastian vanished. No sign of him on any video throughout the community. Thousands of miles logged by law enforcement, canines, helicopters, even dive teams, and no sign of him. Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed. People pointing fingers at them. You're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view and not assume what they know. It's just better to stick to the facts. Are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, no. myself and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have anything that they've wanted. We have. Hi, CP, have you got proof that you Passed your polygraph. Have you? Have you got past your polygraph? Because you know what? Seth has passed his polygraph and he's being nationwide. Where's DP? Hmm? Provided. What do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you right now? That we love you so much and we want you to come home and you're not in trouble. I missed it. I can't see it on that one for some reason. I can't see that deepest delight. But it is there as well. I noticed on one of these. Deception detective. Now he is good. Hi. Uh, this one. Deception detective. Up link in. The description. Right. Let me just see some here. Yeah, he is taunting people on YouTube. Oh, he's an ass. He's an eye hole. 
sorry, if there's anyone who loves CP on here, you're not going to get a good reaction about him from me. You're not. He's an a-hole. And if what he said... Yes, it's from him I learned that as well. I learned Deeper's Delight from The Deception Detective. If you if you haven't seen any of his videos, go and watch them. He's really, really good. He knows what he's talking about. He's not just some, oh, I'm just going to, I can say anything I like. I know what I'm saying about this person. No, he is trained, fully trained in what he does. Right? And it's just, to be honest with you, when you're on YouTube, and you're watching anything on TV, right? It's the words we listen to more than anything else. It's the words. So, so a lot of YouTubers were already dissecting their words. But since watching this guy, Deception Detective, I know I keep saying his name. His link is in the description, will be in my description. All right. Please go and see him. Sign up to him. Anything. So show your support because he is so good. And you learn so much of him. Yeah, he explains it. SG is saying exactly what I'm thinking, but she's getting to say it before I can say. He explains it so so well that you could have an IQ of what five and you don't understand what he meant. That's how well he can explain anything. Right? He did he was he did want to do an interview with them. I remember him saying at the beginning he would love to do an interview with them. Right, but they won't go on his channel. Do you really think Chris will go on, our well, CP will go on his channel? Nope. Nope. Because he'll, he knows how to ask questions. Right? He knows how to ask questions, what sort of questions, how to word it, everything. Right, and you can tell by their answer then whether they're being deceptive or not. He's trained. So he's not going to go on. Chris ain't going to go on there. He thought he could get, a, he could run circles around Nancy by being, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, three bags full, ma'am. Uh, she caught on to you, didn't she, Chris? She's called you out on a couple of things, like how you said you'd done a, a polygraph, then you said you had things, and, you know, you were telling people on YouTube channels you'd done a polygraph, then on her channel you said you had things. She caught you out on that, didn't she? Um, what else? I'm sure she catch you out on a lot more as well. We're going to be looking at the Nancy Grace interview tonight with Grace... I've only got the audio. I haven't got the video, but that's fine. That's fine. But I know, I know. It's like I'll tell you something, SG. It's like Chris has watched that case, right? Because Don was the one who spoke out all the time, and yet he wasn't there. Who's talking all the time? Chris, because but he wasn't there. Um, then Don got all flirty wirty. That's what Chris has been doing. He would get nasty to people if he didn't get his own way. Oh, guess who else is being nasty to people? Uh, yeah, CP. Um, who else? What else? Oh yeah, he will only. Don only went on channels who favoured him, who would be a yes sir, no sir man to him, gave him 
gave in to his little, every little wimp, wimp of his, just like CP. CP will only go on certain channels. Right? So, they're both narcissistic. Narcissistic. Oh, I can't say. I can't say any what I w would love to say. I'll probably say I'm Friday when I go over to my daughter-in-law's. <laughs> I let, I let, I, no, I can't because my grandkids will be there. I can't. I can only say it when my grandkids aren't there. So, but no, um, I don't. Hey, she's a mother. Come on. Allegedly. <laughs> you know what? It's so annoying that we have to keep saying in my opinion, or allegedly. But can I just say something? No, because I'm not going to say that no more. I'm not going to say in my opinion or allegedly, because everything I say on my lives is my opinion and allegedly. So I'm not going to keep saying it every time I say something. It's I will say it once, and I'll say it, I'll, I'll say it every, I'll put a little screen thing up at the beginning of my life. Everything I say on the, my lives is, in my opinion, or allegedly. I will not state it on everything I say. I'm not. Because I'm entitled to my opinion. And I don't have to say, well, in my, in my opinion, in my opinion, that drives me nuts. But yeah, they're both psychopaths. But um, I can't. I'll, I'll find that interview out. I'll have a look Thursday tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow morning when I get up, I'll find my live on that interview, and I'll take the clips I've out of it to show tomorrow. But tomorrow I've got a long day on here. As I said at the beginning, I'm on from five pm because I'm covering. The Adam Montgomery sentencing tomorrow. Yes. Go in there. And he's got to be there. The judge has told him. If he if he cannot say no, he cannot say no. The judge has ordered him to be there. And if that means chaining him up to a chair and wheeling, wheeling him in, then that is what they will do. Question, do press releases usually have a date and signature? Oh, hold on, I'm going to check something. Oh. Why isn't it not showing all of it? I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I know on this one here, which I'm sh showing here, they haven't got the date on it. So I don't know because I'm not releases like this. I'm used to press releases where they stand outside. Like in the UK, they normally stand outside and please stand. Right. A few of us by the side of them and say, say what they've got to say and walk away and leave us in suspense, scratching our heads. So I, I've never really dealt with the way they do it over there in the USA, where they do it on Facebook. Re release a, a letter out to the press. I've never seen that before. I don't work for the press, so I don't know. Best person to ask for that would be... Well, you should know who it is. He He's press himself. He's on YouTube and he's press. He's press. I'm not saying he's... And I'm not doing it. I'm not going to keep 
Yes, and when he was posted, he said he's this is only. He said he's he's. Hmm. It just got me that they did that first one, which I've got up on the screen there. Right. And then because everyone was questioning that one, they then put out another one. Literally, I don't know how many hours later. Right. Nick Berry's. Backed him up on this one. He was a bit confused by it, but he backed him up. And then, literally, I was like, they're putting out the other one, stating that. Is it on Nick Bear's page? Oh, I'm going to have a look. Is this No, this must be, um, where is he? Oh. 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 I don't think it was not Sebastian. I still don't trust law enforcement. You know what I mean? There's only this one. And what I'm very sorry. Yeah. Bring the other one out before. You know what I mean? So, he did have another one out before. So, I don't know what, I don't know what's happening with all these flipping, I'm sure they're being deleted. I'm sure they are. <coughs> anyway, I want to show you the into. <laughs> Please, I will put the link. But actually, he's, if he's going to put all the links to his videos concerning this, because I haven't seen any of them yet. I, I think I've seen one on, I think he did one on Seth. I'm not sure. But. I'm going to have to sit down and do a marathon day where I'll just sit down and watch all these videos he's done. Hang on. Right, so we're going to go to Nancy Grace. And we're going to listen to what she has to say. Well, no, no. This one is for CP. This one is for CP. If you're there and you listen, by any chance you listen to it, you don't. <laughs> but this one is just for you. We all remember that 
that moment when I put Sebastian's father, Seth, on the hot seat on national TV and asked him, would he be willing to take a polygraph? He said, yes, he did take a polygraph. Straight back out to Seth Rogers. Joining us is Sebastian's father. And now joining us is a renowned polygrapher, Kendall Shull, former head of the entire FBI polygraph program in D.C., former special agent with the FBI in D.C. He is at Kendall Investigations. Also joining us, Tony Mathis, who is helping Seth Rogers as he walks his very, very rocky path. First of all, let me just get this out of the way. This is a yes. This is CP. Did Seth Rogers pass his polygraph? Yes, he did. Okay. Right. To everyone who watches watches this video of mine, who are maybe supporters who believe CP and KP, Right? Do you want some humble pie sent to you? Because I'll, I'll make some and send it to you. I can do that. I can make some humble pie to you all. Because you all failed, did fail, fell asleep, he did this, he did that. You know what? I, I don't care what he did. I knew he would pass. Tell you why? Because he's the father. And reason they got him on camera he works at a corrections facility right where they have cameras on every door you walk through every corridor you walk along every room you go in they cameras and i can log his every move every minute of the time he was there so i knew he would, he would pass right so please if there's anyone watching this and they'd like some humble pie just email me. I will put my email address up. Right. I'm going to put my email address up for all those who'd like some humble pie. Oh, I'm going to find it. Oh, God's sake. Right. 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 Humble pie. Here we come. Where is he? Oh, it's the bangers, isn't it? I'm in the wrong section. There you are. If you'd like some humble pie, just email me. I can send it to you. For all those who say all that about Seth not passing the polygraph. Okay? So, anyway. Yeah, I, the only one that is released was that one that I showed you. That was their one. Right, that was their first one. <coughs> well, you know what? The reason I go on about the humble pie is because people are always coming on Facebook pages and going, you know what? When we find out the truth and Chris and Katie are innocent, are you all going to say sorry? Uh, uh, I've got to think about that one for a second. No. Why should I say sorry to people for their actions and their words? I only report on that, what they say and how they say it. So I'm not going to say sorry for something they've said and something they've done. So, no, I will not be saying sorry. I did say at the very beginning, if it comes out I'm wrong, I will say sorry. And this was at the very beginning. But since then, we've had so much BS come at us. I will not say sorry. Not for one millisecond would I apologise to that piece of BS, narcissistic, Bite your tongue, Angie. Bite your tongue. I swear, I'd have no tongue left. If I was to actually bite my tongue, I'd have no tongue left. So, 
so that we can hear this again. We'll see. This is for. We all remember that moment when I put Sebastian's father, Seth, on the hot seat on national TV and asked him, would he be willing to take a polygraph? He said, yes, he did take a polygraph. Straight back out to Seth Rogers. Joining us is Sebastian's father. And now joining us is a renowned polygrapher. Kendall Shule, former head of the entire FBI polygraph program in D.C., former special agent with the FBI in D.C. He is at Kendall Investigations. Also joining us, Tony Mathis, who is helping Seth Rogers as he walks this very, very rocky path. First of all, let me just get this out of the way. This is a yes, no, Kendall Shule. Did Seth Rogers pass his polygraph? Yes, he did. Okay, Seth Rogers, tell me about going. Hear that, Chris? Did you hear me? Do you want me to shout it for you? He passed. Now you show us proof. And I don't want no paperwork. Internet. Anyone and pull up a paper saying you pass the polygraph. I want CPI or law enforcement, whoever it was who gave you your polygraph, to come on your TV. Do a presser. Tell us. Only will I believe it if it comes from their mouths. Okay? Until then. I can high jump, a long jump off a cliff. By the way, I recommend your video where to see Sebastian with the same. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to, I can't remember which video that was. Um, thank you for that. But I'll just love that video. I really do. I've Nancy Grace, but we're going to listen when I can find it on Facebook. <laughs> then I can get past this part of my Facebook page. Oh, look, it's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. I can't get past it. I'll have to keep I'm going to keep playing it. Even though I'd love to sit here for the next two hours and just keep playing that one little clip. I might actually clip that myself. Save it. Oh, it's on that page. Okay. Yeah, I know where it is. I've just got to find it. <laughs> I'll find it. It's having the time in the game to go through all the videos I've done and go so we do the research. Like you hear things on every YouTube channels and you think, hmm. So you write it down and then you've got to go and try and find all this information out, back check it. Right, to make sure it is a thing. So I will find it, SG. But thank you so much. I really appreciate but we're going to listen to this. While we're listening to this, I'll go and get a drink. Right. Come on. In the 90s, New York detective Louis Scarcella locked up the worst criminals. Putting bad guys away. There's no feeling like it. Then jailhouse lawyers took aim, led by Derek Hamilton. Scarcella took me to the precinct and lied. 20 men eventually walked free. Now, 
In the Burden podcast, after a decade of silence, Louis Scarcella finally tells his story, and so does Derek Hamilton. Listen to the Burden on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Breaking news tonight. After a so-called sighting of missing autistic boy Sebastian Rogers at a Blue Ridge Mountains rest stop, Sebastian's dad, Seth, tells us it's him. And with us tonight, live, dad, Seth Rogers, to address that. Oh, God. In the 90s, New York detective Louis Garcia. CSG, when you say methodical, logical, and wise and common sense, I've had 58 years to, to learn all that. I've had 58 years to learn all that. <laughs> Thank you. Ella locked up the worst criminals. Putting bad guys away. In the 90s. Has resulted from the. Yes, and yes. Lauren, thank you for being with us. What can you tell me about the sighting? Because the authorities are not saying it's not him. They are saying, quote, nothing credible is pointing to the sighting of Sebastian. In other words, they haven't been able to confirm it yet. Remember, this is like a rest stop, a tourist center. People are visiting there that could live in any of the surrounding states. Absolutely, Nancy. And I think what's important to note here is that North Carolina authorities have not identified the boy in the photo. So as of right now, it's still considered a potential lead. Guys, joining us is Seth Rogers, Sebastian's dad, and Lauren Conlon, host of Outlier Podcast. Seth, tell me what went through your mind when you first saw this photo and when you compare them side by side it's really uncanny you know my son's alive then he i mean he he looks good in the picture i mean he's got clothes on he's got shoes on do you recognize the clothes no i don't how about the shoes don't recognize those either they look brand new yes they do in fact the clothes look new as well uh how far away in your estimation, Seth, is this rest stop tourist attraction area from Sebastian's home? It's about six hours, give or take, with traffic. How did you become aware of the sighting, the alleged sighting? People started calling me and asking me about the picture, and then people turned around and started sending me the picture. And again, what went through your mind when you first saw it? I got to go. Oh, I got to go up there. I got to see, I mean, the pictures there. I wanted to go see the footage because I figured there'd be some type of surveillance. And did you go? I did. I drove up to North Carolina. You took the six hour plus ride to North Carolina to investigate this photo. And what, if anything, did you learn when you got there? Wasn't allowed to see the video footage. Why? Um, I was told it's an active investigation, so I'm not allowed to see it. Who told you that, Seth? People at the park. It's my understanding the woman who, who took the picture was also convinced that this looked exactly like Sebastian and handed it over to the TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and then later it was posted online. Is that your understanding, Seth? Yes, ma'am. Seth, when you saw this picture, how did it make you feel? It gave me hope. Rekindled what hope I was losing. Seth, I'm looking at the way the boy is standing in this photo. I know you've looked at it a million times. He's got his, his right arm somewhat um, over his stomach. And I'm wondering, does this pose uh, look familiar to you? By the, I mean, by the looks of it, he's stepping down off the rocks and stuff. He's looking at where he's going. Yeah. But He's also been missing for two months. So his demeanor and everything could possibly have shifted. In what way? Why do you say that? I haven't heard from my son in oh, two and a half months. You know, if he's not, he doesn't have a phone with him. You know, he hasn't heard from me. If somebody convinced him to go away and won't give him a phone, I don't know. I mean, Let me ask you, Seth, is it? 
correct that your PI that you had to hire, which is a whole nother can of worms, spoke to the person that took the photo? No. Um, my other PI, Chloe, she's the one that spoke with him. I couldn't hear you. What? The other PI on the case. She's the one that spoke with him. So a PI on the case did speak with the photographer, correct? Yes, ma'am. And what did the PI learn? When she took the picture and why she didn't uh, call 911 immediately and what she did when she reviewed the picture and the fact that she asked why she put it on, on social media and it was because she stated that it was because TBI didn't get back with her after she had submitted it. What else did you learn? Why did she decide to take the picture? And what else could she tell you through the PI about who this boy was with? Nothing. What was he doing? Was he crying? Did he look hungry? Was he with a man or a woman? Um, the individual that took the picture was actually her husband that took the picture because he was faster with his, his phone than she was. And, uh, They were driving by, and he took the picture. And then when they were able to look at it, they submitted it to TBI. They didn't hear back from TBI that they had received the picture or anything else, so they put it out on social media. Guys, the photo we're talking about. To Lauren Conlon joining us. Lauren, exactly where is this rest stop or tourist attraction? So it's in North Carolina. It is a, a blue the Blue Ridge Mountains Visitor Center. And like like Seth said, Sebastian did not appear to be in, in this photo. And I think all of us are, are, are very hopeful. And I, I think it's amazing that Seth went to North Carolina and drove five hours from Tennessee. Back to Seth. Did the, the man or the woman see who the boy was with? No, they said they didn't even know if they were with the group or not. They didn't know if the lady was with them. What lady? The lady in the pink shirt? Yeah. Did he emerge from a car? They just saw him as they drove through the under. The, where they're at right now is like a, it's, the parking lot is behind there. Right in front of there is the entrance into like the gift shop. Yeah. So him being there, there was no, there's no way to see if he was getting in or out of a car right there. So he was on his way into the gift shop, Seth? That's the direction that he's heading. Well, that seems to me that there should be gift shop surveillance video or at least other witnesses. So is that the surveillance video you were trying to get, Seth? Yes, it was. Now, we know that a statement has been issued that, quote, nothing credible is pointing to any sign of Sebastian. That's pretty vague. Nothing credible is pointing to any sign of Sebastian. That's incredibly vague. It doesn't say this picture is a hoax, this picture is a fake, this is not Sebastian. They're not saying any of that. What do you make of that response, Seth? That they don't know what to say. Joining me, guys, also is Irv Brandt, um, renowned investigator, former U.S. Marshal Service International Investigations Branch and author of Flying Solo, Top of the World on Amazon. Irv, thank you so much for being with us. Now, this is a conundrum. If this boy is Sebastian the way his father thinks that it is, I mean, look at it for Pete's sake. Look at the side by side, the chin, the jawline, the nose, the hair. It's, oh, it's uncanny. It's at a tourist gift shop in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's a needle in a haystack. Herb Brandt, what do we do? Nancy, the video, the picture, uh, the way I see it, and if the father says that's his son, that's good enough for me, of course. But the... Now bear in mind, this actually came out before I said anything. Uh, and since then, I think she's probably updated it because she mentioned 
investigate the sale of boys not Sebastian. Right. Investigation is going to center around trying to get anyone that was there at that time, maybe looking at um, video of the parking lot, running down tag numbers, trying to find other witnesses, other people that may have been shooting video and inadvertently captured his image on their video. I can imagine that the police are just you know, the investigators in this case from multiple agencies are just searching all different kinds of avenues uh, looking for clues. And when they when they make a comment like no credible evidence so far, it's basically like saying no comment on the investigation. Uh, they don't want to say either way. But I would imagine that this is this is a crucial piece of information to their investigation. Well, to me, and of course, I'm just a trial lawyer. The first thing I would do is pull that surveillance video, the way Seth Rogers described, and I would go in and look for every single receipt. At the time, that picture was taken, and the photographer gives us the time and the date that it was taken, every single receipt. Then I would find out if there's any surveillance video in the parking lot, just find out if he went to a car, which obviously he did. What car? It's got to be on surveillance video. Agree, disagree, or rant? I mean, you're the former U.S. Marshal going all the way around the world finding people. What do you do next? Nancy, I agree. I mean, the car is the most critical thing. If you can identify the car that he got out of, even... Even if you don't have a tag number, the make and the model of the car would be just crucial uh, to send out a bolo to the surrounding states, uh, then potentially finding witnesses at that time, like you said, checking receipts uh, in the gift shop and interviewing people that were there at the time, you know, something that they may have seen uh, I said that last night. If they've got a registration of the car to that state, right, because I believe in the USA, your registration, the tag numbers have the state on it, what state it's We're in the UK, you have a registration number, and that's it. You could be Welsh, Scottish, Irish, whatever. Just to registration number. It does, you can tell it's a UK registration number when you go over to Europe, right? Otherwise, that's the only thing, right? So, send out a bolo. Why did it take so long, though, for law enforcement to get this information and to confirm this woman? was the mother of that child, and that child was not Sebastian. It took over a week. It was what? So, round about a week. They had over a week because they had that information on a Saturday. We didn't get this information, that photo, till Monday, Monday or Tuesday. So, they had... Before we even got onto Facebook. So it took a long time. Find An autistic boy may stick out in their memory, you know, see, seeing him, and they may have, you know, looked at that person, at that boy, at the people that he was with, and, it, and if a skilled investigator asks the right questions to these people, it can lead to cr crucial, crucial. Uh, leads in this case. I still say it's a needle in a haystack, but a needle can be found in a haystack. Seth Rogers with us, Sebastian's dad. Seth, when you look at these two photos side by side, I was looking at the nose, the chin, the jawline, the demeanor, the hair. What looks similar to you? All of the above. Nose, I mean, the way his hair that, that comes over, I mean... What do you mean by that? Everything on there just screams. 
What do you mean by that? His hair, because his hair goes in the same direction. My son has a cowlick in a certain spot on his head. Yeah. And no matter what happens, his hair tries to part in the middle. Since he was born, he was born with no hair, but you could see kind of like a little part in the fuzz. And it's been that way forever. And I'm looking at the way this boy's hair is. Right. That's it. I could be wrong, but I think when News Nation show Pete family heard that. But this has been all over every social network site you can name, right? That picture was everywhere. Anyone who watches crime stories and things like this on YouTube and whatever, and follow crime YouTubers and whatever on Facebook and things like that, they share this information on their own page. So you've got 30,000 people on a page, right? Those 30,000 people, quite a lot of them, are going to share that picture onto their own page. And then you've got their friends and family on their page possibly sharing that picture. I don't... I don't understand. If this woman was on a holiday, which she could have been, right, hold on, I'm just moving my mic, which she could have been, and say it, say it was my son and my daughter-in-law my daughter on holiday, and I, I was seeing a picture of my grandson come up on the uh, on a Facebook page, she'd be going, what the hell? Or I saw my friend's child come up on a Facebook page. What? I'd be straight on the phone to that mother and say, I think you need to check this Facebook page. Right? They've got a picture of you and your son on it. Someone out of all those thousands of people who saw that picture, who's watched the YouTube channels, who's been on Facebook, um, Instagram, TikTok, you name me. Someone must have recognised that those people. One person at least. If one person saw that lag and thought, oh my God, that looks like Sebastian. One person out of all of us, out of all the thousands of people looking for this little boy, seeing a child matching the description, I'm sure there's one person who saw that photo being circulated around Facebook and all the other social networks. I'd have been straight on the phone to get in touch with them. If it was a picture of my friend's friend, I'd say, do you know this person? Yeah, that's my friend. Can you get in touch with them and let them know that they're all over Facebook? You know what I mean? Yeah, they have to got change. You know what I mean? Nowadays, you, no one goes anywhere without the mobile phones. Right? Nowhere. And I used to go camping years ago my little, when my kids were little. Uh, didn't have a mobile phone. Well, yeah, I did. I did have a mobile phone by then. When we started going camping. And I never took it with me. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, I did take it with me. But it was left in the car, turned off. And there's only one time I phoned my home, my mum. And that was because the family we were with, they'd been burgled, right? So I got on to my mum and said, Mum, will you do me a favour, go and check my house, please? I said, because the family were with, they've been burgled. Now, if someone knows they've gone on a holiday and they know and they know that we know them, they might just think, wow, you know what I mean? So my mum went around there with my sister's partner at the time, or my dad, one of them, and as she went to open the door, because she got keys, the door was, she said, if I could push the door open, the whole frame would have gone. 
that someone had tried to get in my door and all my frame was loosened. So my sister's partner at the time went and got this feck off bolts that went through the, like, a good way into the wall as well. So it went through the frame of the door frame and so far into the wall to hold my frame, my door frame in place. That's the only time I ever used my phone was that day. My phone was always kept off. Right, but nowadays, I must admit, nowadays, I think I can, you've got these charges you can buy where you can charge your phone up. You can charge your phone up by plugging it into your car and things like that nowadays. So, because I feel bad for the way this woman is being treated. I also don't want to believe law enforcement is inept. But you know, sorry, I'm just going to put that wrong at first. They have to, law enforcement, as I said about TBI, more about TBI. If it's a complicated investig uh, case, do you remember with some of them in Utah Wells, they said this is a complicated, or something like that, they said this is a complicated case. They said it in this one, this is a complicated case. They can't deal with complicated. They don't know how to. They don't know how to deal with it. They can deal with missing children who they can find in a couple of hours. But if after a week they can't find that child, it's like, you know what? We don't know what to do no more. Tell you what, we'll just sit here, drink our coffee, eat our donuts, and wait for that big tip to come in and break this case wide open. So, I've already put that one up. So, that's my opinion. Now, just waiting for someone to bring that tip in. Well, unless there's a big reward, and I hope to God Seth throws this out pretty darn quick, perhaps his PR could do this, sort this out, and get a reward going, you won't get no one come forward. No one, unless, say, you, they, say they pick someone up on charges of, oh, I don't know, driving under the influence, right? Something like that. Something where they're going to go to jail for, yep. So driving under the influence, maybe not, they might just get a phone and slap on the hand. But something they're going to go to jail for, yep. Only then, if that person knows something that happened that day and can confirm it and they can find, check that information he's giving is correct, which leads them in the direction of uh, arresting someone or whatever, then they are not going to get anywhere. So they either need a big, big reward or they need to um, wait until they call someone who's willing to talk. Hi there, Karen. Was whispered done? One side effect was increased during age. Well, you know what? I, they should know that, and as one YouTuber put it, spend $39.99 on a mattress cover, right, waterproof mattress cover, 
so that all you've got to do then is strip the bedding, put it all in the wash, put it in the dryer, get back on the bed the same day. You don't do what Chris says, or what he's supposed to have said, and throw his mattress in the garage because he's sick and tired of smelling, the house smelling of piss. Well, you know what, CP, if I had my way, you'd be in a cell with no blankets. No, a very itchy blanket, no mattress, maybe one made of straw, a bucket in the corner, and a hatch just to throw some water and bread into. Because you're Hmm. Well, they obviously didn't notify their doctor then, did they? But why would they? They didn't care about Sebastian. So... But, but what is this spare time for? Is it to help him sleep? To calm him down? Because I don't know nothing about medication for children who are autistic. So... I swear to God, my cats are going mental again. So, I've got... I'm not joking. Under this table, I was going to back up today, right? But I didn't get round to it because I was doing other things. Under this table where I sit with my laptop, there's clumps of fur from where these two keep fighting under the table. Now, one is just waiting outside the table for the other one to come out. As soon as the other one comes out from the table, he'll dive on him. He's lying there looking at me saying, no, I won't. I'm not. I know you are, Bobby. Oh, shit. I'm a retired. It's an anti-psychotic use for autism. I thought it was to calm him down. Hmm. He definitely needed calming down that night because he'd had such um, a busy, hectic day. You know what I mean? Go to the... Where did they go? Go and go and dig some grocery shopping first. Then they went to BJ's. Then they went to the bowling. Then apparently they came home, put the uh, shopping away. Then they went out for dinner. You know what I mean? All those noises and different sounds and smells. She's not making her life easy. Take the child to one of those places, maybe. Maybe go shopping and then go bowling. Then come home and actually, fun fact, Kate, fun fact, cook dinner. Because apparently when she cooks, that's a fun fact. So... So if she only just did that one thing that day with him, well, just got the, uh, a few groceries in and, and then went bowling. But to do all everything else they did in that day, I sometimes wonder if she can cook. It doesn't make me wonder if she can cook. Anyway... I'm going to carry on because this has got a bit longer, about another 10 minutes or so. He's going over yeah, toward, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's the same as Sebastian's. It's just, it looks like my son. Nancy Jackie Howard here. The uh, local sheriff says the boy in the photo is not Sebastian. 
Seth, one more time. Do you believe this photo captured in the Blue Ridge Mountains is Sebastian? I do. Straight out to Tony Mathis, who is helping Seth Rogers in this very, very difficult time of need. Tony, question. You've heard the response of LE law enforcement. Quote, nothing credible is pointing to a sign, any sign of Sebastian. What the now, I will say it for the members in my chat. Anything said or posted from my chat is their opinion and allegedly. I will not say it again. I don't want my members in my chat to have to keep saying, in my opinion or allegedly, everything said on this page, on my lives, in chat, or by me, is in their opinion, my opinion. Or LA, I want to keep having to say, in my opinion. Okay, I'm just putting it out there now. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means to me. It means that uh, it's a plausible deniability statement. It gives them an out if they do uh, indeed find it to be him. It's just a very vague statement. You know, there's a lot of ways to deliver that information that would get people to believe that yes it's him or no it's not him and i don't think that that delivery did anything to assure people one way or the other so we've got in the 1980s and 90s new york city needed a tough cop like detective louis scarcella putting bad guys away this is a new limited edition four coin collection from the Royal Mint. The latest releases feature designs inspired by the galaxy's polygraph. Yes, ma'am. We all remember that moment when I put Sebastian's father, Seth, on the hot seat on national TV and asked him, would he be willing to take a polygraph? He said, yes, he did take a polygraph straight. Here we go again, CP. Just in case you missed the first three times I showed it. Say it again. Back out to Seth Rogers. Joining us is Sebastian's father. And now joining us is a renowned polygrapher, Kendall Shull, former head of the entire FBI polygraph program in D.C., former special agent with the FBI in D.C. He is at Kindle Investigations. Also joining us, Tony Mathis, who is helping Seth Rogers as he walks this very, very rocky path. First of all, let me just get this out of the way. This is a yes, no, Kendall Shule. Did Seth Rogers pass his polygraph? Yes, he did. Okay, Seth Rogers, Tell me about going and taking the polygraph. We want to hear every single word because I've got a stack of nasty uh, online posts about you failing, about you not going, blah. Right, hold on. Let's catch up with some of these questions. If you didn't take meds, would you go into a psychosis? Karen, can you answer that? If he didn't take meds, would he go into psychosis? I don't know. Oh, and Seth mentioned that theory overdose. Wow. Yeah, it's a possible theory. But you see, the thing is, I've said it before, that first interview that I did with the news, people if it wasn't for that little smirk she gives near the beginning of that interview right that duper's delight i would have believed that she knew nothing she would have had me hook line and sinker she doesn't know anything on that first interview Absolutely psychosis. Wow. There's your answer, SJ. 
Wow. Thank you for that, Karen. So, um, because I've been hearing that if he didn't take his meds, it would it'd be okay, right? It wouldn't harm him not to have his meds. It'd be more hyper and all that lot. So, Hyper, oh my god. Hypothermia or overheating, hallucinations, sleepwalking. Oh my god. Well, I don't think he walked out of the house because there's no scent of him, no scent at all. And increase, yeah, and he used to get punished. For taking food into his bedroom. Oh my god, you you two are killing me here. I form a friend you when you saw crisis. Oh my god. I know there's a lot of medications you can't... Well, I was on a medication once. And you're supposed to just wean off that. But I just stopped. Right? And no one realised that I wasn't taking that medication no more. They didn't realise. And then one day, I think it was my son or something, said, are you still on that medication, Mum? No. I haven't had it for like a month now. You know what I mean? And, but there's a lot of other medications I know you can't just stop. You can't. They do say there's all medications you shouldn't just stop. You have to wing them off, especially when you're being on it a long time. But there's some medications you can just stop. And I'm on one of those medications. But I'm on it for the next three years. But the other medication I'm on, I'd have to be weaned off that one. And I don't want to be weaned off it. Because I know if I get weaned off it, I won't sleep. And I'll be... Literally... Here, there and everywhere, losing my head constantly. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't sleeping, I was constantly cleaning and I'd start one job and then go and do another job and then be doing something else. And it would take me all day, like, say I was doing the washing up. Yeah? I'd start the washing up and then I'd go, I'd go to the bathroom. And while I'm in the bathroom, I think, oh God, that, I need to clean this bathroom. So then I'd start cleaning the bathroom. Forget about the washing up in the kitchen. And then while I'm in the bathroom, I'm picking things up like towels and phone. I think, oh, they got to go in the wash. So I go to put that in the wash, in my wash basket. And then I think, oh, just notice my bed, the bedrooms need doing. So I start doing the bedrooms. So I was never getting one specific job finished. And there are days now where I still have days like that, but not as bad. And I only get guys like that when I haven't slept properly the night before. Because I'm trying to keep myself awake during the day so that I do get some sleep the next night. So I'm trying to keep myself busy and my, my head's everywhere. <clears throat> yeah. Right, 15 year olds usually take 0 0.5 milligrams. I just don't know if KP put his behavior in large side effect. <clears throat> well, you know what, Sam? What we heard about CP, 
You've heard him on the other videos, on the other lives, how nasty he is, how vile he is. You heard him say on Nancy Grace how he used the belt. Well, he said it the first time on another YouTuber's channel. Then it was brought up on Nancy Grace and he said it again. Right? And if he didn't tidy his room up to, their, to how they wanted it done, he would go in and make him put all the toys in a bag and take it and get the lag then to take it outside to the rubbish and put it in the in the bin. Right, you don't do that. You okay, you wanna say look, okay, I'm going in with that black bag. My kids will be running up them stairs before I've even got the black bag out of the cupboard. You know what I mean? But even if I had put them in a black bag, I would never throw it away. I could probably just put it in a cubby hole. And then they'd say, well, where's my toys going? I'd say, well, you get tidy your room up, keep your room tidy, and if you keep it tidy, I'll give you the toys back. But I didn't have to take the toys off them because they went up there before I even got the black bag out of the cupboard. I was accidentally overdosed by a doctor, but I'd been fine with doses for a long time. But one day I ended up on life support because of my experience. It is possible his body couldn't handle dosage. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you a story about possible overdose. My son, when he was three months old, right? He was in that much pain, right? He was in so much pain, he was screaming in pain. So I called a doctor in. He come out, and this is when they used to do home visits after, when the surgery was closed. They come out after the end of surgery and do home visits. This doctor come out. He was an older doctor, nearing retirement age, right? And he put it down to, or what was it he put it down to? Oh, God, I can't think what he put it down to. Anyway, he gave me this medicine. I thought, okay. Well, I gave my son this medicine. Wow. Yeah, this medicine really worked. To the point where I was having to physically wake my son up. Now, bearing in mind, he's just about three, four months old. I was physically having to wake him up to give him his bottle. He wasn't he wasn't crying for a bottle. He wasn't crying full stop. He was just constantly sleeping. And I said, this isn't right. So the next day, I left the medicine off. I didn't give him the medicine. And he was screaming. His face was going blue. So I got him to the hospital. And I took him to the children's hospital in Birmingham. And they they looked at him. And they did x-ray. And what it was, they had to give him a suppository. Because uh, he had a blockage. Right? And once I gave him that suppository, and they gave me, like, four boxes of this fluid drink. It was clear, but it was like a, a food as well. And they gave me these four boxes of these, these, these little bottles of juice, of, like, fluid. Like, four ounces or whatever in each bottle. Four or five ounces. And they said, just give him that until it all runs out, until you've used all the bottles up. Anyway, I said to them, I said, and at that time, when I had my son, they just started bringing out these red medical books where every time you go to a doctor, the doctor would fill it in. Or every time you saw a nurse, the nurse would fill it in. And they'd take the weight of the child, the height of the child, everything. I said to this doctor at the hospital, I said, can you fill it in, please? Can you fill this book in? Oh, I've not seen this before. I said, no, it's a new thing they just brought out this year. Okay, so he's filled it in. I can't remember what he put down was the problem. Right? 
And I told him, I showed him as well what my doctor had given to me for my son. Remember, I said he was only three, maybe four months old. Oh, that was it. The doctor said he had colic. My doctor said he had colic. That was it. He didn't have colic. This doctor at the hospital looked at this medicine and said, your doctor prescribed this. I went, yeah, why? He said, you're not supposed to have this until you're one year old. I went, pardon? He said, you're not supposed to give this to any child until they're one year old. My son was three, maybe four months old. I took him home. And the next day I went down to my doctor's. And I said, I'm sorry, but he's at the moment. I said, I'll wait. Well, we can see, get you to think, nope, I want to see doctor, whatever. And I went in. Finally got in to see him. And he said, oh, hello. He said, how's, uh, how's your son? I said, don't you dare hello me. I said, I ended up at the hospital with my son. Because the medication you gave me was knocking him out. Oh, well, that was what it's supposed to No. The doctor at the hospital, and I shoved this red book, and I literally threw it at this doctor. I said, read what that doctor put in there. That medication you prescribed for my son is not supposed to be given to a child under one year of age. My son is three, maybe four months old. And you're giving him that. I said, and you didn't have colic. I can't remember what it was. Why? But you didn't have colic. And you were treating him for colic. Why? I walked out of that room. I took the book off him. I said, you will never see my son again. Ever. You will be the last doctor on this earth. And I still wouldn't let my son see you. I walked down. And, it was, and I must have heard me because I was quite loud and people was looking at me and I said, yes, by the way, don't take your child to that doctor. It gives you the wrong medication for him. And walked out. Right. And I was telling my husband when he got home and said, you didn't. I said, I flipping well did. That doctor is not coming near my son again. Literally, three months later, that doctor retired. Retired. I went, good. That he shouldn't be practicing. He gave my son the wrong medication. He was treating him for something he didn't have. He gave him the wrong medication. Now, if I hadn't took him to the hospital, if I hadn't left that medication off my son and carried on giving him, what could, I don't know what could have happened. You know what I mean? I dread to even think what could have happened. Right. But, um, an accidental overdose by a doctor, but I had been fine with dosage. I ended up on life support because my experience, it is possible his body can handle dosage. Exactly. But why would she, like, you've heard that. You've heard it in that video where she said, where she went in and woke him up. If he was, if he had passed during the night, why doesn't she just, why does she not just phone, <coughs> um, EMS, the police? My son had passed during the night. You know what I mean? Why? It doesn't make sense that she wouldn't do that. I don't understand. If that is the case, why didn't she just report it? This is what I'm saying. Katie, run. Because that guy you're with is going to dump you. Gonna you get a bus. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of trolls chiming in. Let's get to the truth of that polygraph. Seth, 
What happened? I showed up early for the polygraph. Uh, Mr. Kendall contacted me and told me that he'd be there well before the time that we had stated. So I showed up and I sat in the <clears> chair <throat> and let him attach those things to me and took the polygraph. Have you ever had a polygraph before? No, ma'am. And what kind of questions did the polygrapher Kendall Shul ask you? If I had ever wanted to harm anybody, if I ever wanted to hurt my son, if I had ever hurt my son, if I would ever had anything to do with his disappearance. Question. You said they hooked you up. What do you mean by that, Seth Rogers? They put things on my hands. They uh, wrap cords around me. Um, they had a blood pressure cuff on me to measure my blood pressure, measure my heart rate, my breathing rate, things like that. How long did it take? It took a minute. It took 60 seconds. Could you be precise or more precise? Uh, How long do you think it took? We were there for what, three hours. Four hours. That's about right. It's not easy. Okay, sit tight, Seth. Hi, Cleveview. You so curious where his vacation photos are. What vacation photos are those? The one where he's um, on the boat and holding the fish. That would probably be when he's gone to his. Um, with his dad down to his grandparents. Because they said they'd go out on the boat and go fishing. Yeah, that would probably be... Um, because it was mentioned how uh, Sebastian used to love going for, for road trips and his dad would take him down to his mother's and they go fishing on a boat. And they, they, uh, they're talking about it at the vigil once. They had the vigil and they're talking, the grandmother was talking about it then. And how she said she was a better fisherman than, uh, than Seth and the, and the father, the grandfather. So it's probably from when he's been down visiting his grandparents. But I know he used to go fishing with his dad as well, when his dad had him on the weekends. But I'd say... Um, Seth's parents, you mean? Um, Seth's parents live in Texas or something, I believe. They live... Uh, Quite a distance away. Hi, Barbara. Arrest the stepfather and his mother for a start. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to be the one slapping them Pandora bracelets on their wrists. I really would. But you know what? Good to see you here, Barbara. Nice to see you in here. I really would. I'd love to be the one. If I put, uh, say they did a lottery where you picked a number and and that person, whatever number you picked and that number picked was the one who put me and um, Pandora Bradley. I don't like flying. Right? But I will personally fly all the way over to the USA to there to put them nice Pandora bracelets on them. Right, so... Yeah, I'd love to. I think they should. And people are saying that the reason child services was called out in January was nothing to do with the belt. It was all to do with the mattress. I don't know how true that is. And someone was mentioning something about documents today on another YouTube. 
I don't know if SG is still in the chat. Was you in a, on a YouTuber's channel this last night? Because I watched it this morning because I can never get... By the time he comes on, I'm normally in bed. And um, I've just seen the initials SG come up in the, in the chat. And something was said in there. Silver ones, I take it. Oh, yeah. The gold ones are too good to them. Too good for them. Silver ones. <laughs> but, you know, um, I just can't. I can't wrap my head around Katie's behaviour. Well, I'll tell you more what I think in a minute. Let's just finish this off. How much more have we got? Let's go jump a little bit. No deception right. indicated, correct? Three choices, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Now, could you tell me what was Seth Rogers' demeanor when he entered your office? Uh, we had a great Hold. conversation. Like you said, it took uh, a long time. We, we sat and talked. For a long time, I collected some background information from him to make sure that he's suitable for testing. In my opinion, he was. Um, Whoa, we wait a minute. There. Wait a minute, boss. Suitable for testing. You mean he's not drunk or high, right? Is that what that means? Exactly. Exactly. You know, did you do the smell test? I've always wondered if polygraphers, like whenever my twins have to go somewhere <laughs> on a bus or a school event, I, or even a plane, I always go up and and speak to the driver, the pilot, to just get a whiff if they've been drinking. So you assess the participant as to whether they may be drunk or high or on meds. We do. We we, we observe that, uh, obviously. And, you know, we're, we're in close proximity to talk to each other. If he had any alcohol in his breath, I believe I would have known it, particularly when I'm attaching the components to him for the polygraph test. I'm right in his face. So, yes, I would have uh, I would have observed if he had any alcohol in his breath. His demeanor, you say, seems relaxed. Did it remain relaxed throughout the polygraph? Uh, it did uh, seem really relaxed. Mr. Shule, you conducted the polygraph, and what were the critical questions that you asked Seth Rogers, Sebastian's father? The relevant questions, as we call them, that I asked Seth on the polygraph test to determine if he was involved in any way and this child's disappearance were, number one, regarding doing anything to cause the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, do you plan to answer those questions truthfully? He responded, yes. I then asked him, did you do anything that could have caused that boy's disappearance who we discussed today? The answer was no. And the third question was, were you involved in any way in the disappearance of that boy we discussed today? He responded, no. I am reading your polygraph report details, which we plan to publish. Guys, you are hearing the former head of the FBI polygraph program, Kendall Shule, who polygraphed Sebastian Rogers' biological father, Seth. Now, before you ask these three questions, do you plan to answer truthfully? Did you do anything that caused uh, Sebastian's disappearance? Were you involved in any way in the disappearance of Sebastian? Before you ask those, I assume you asked several lead-up questions to get... Right. Now, SG, my concern is if we start... Well, I'd definitely be arrested if that was the case. I must agree. I do agree. Right. I'll definitely be arrested. Cleveview Revolution. I work with a pendulum. What's a pendulum? And my pendulum said the mother and stepfather had nothing to do with his disappearance. I'm also a paranormal investigation. Hmm. My paranormal... Uh, my paranormal equipment keeps saying in the woods. Well, someone said today on another YouTube channel that I was watching this morning, um, 
they need to go back to the beginning again. Not start back, not start, start back at the beginning, but they need to go back to the house. And they need to do a literally a hand search. Look, I've seen these searches going around, and when I've seen these searches going about, they're not actually looking in the bushes and moving tweaks or anything. They walk, like I watched one group of searches at the beginning, right? And they was just walking past piles, pile up of like branches and sticks. I'm thinking, why don't you knock those, move those sticks out of the way, those branches out of the way? You know what I mean? It could be under there. So I think a pendulum is a divination tool for the truth. <laughs> okay. Never heard of that before, Clearview Revolution. <clears throat> Never heard of it. Sorry, but it's like something new to my... I live with an autistic thing, man. They are, they are very intelligent. They are very intelligent. You pick up on what they are good at. Like, my grandson the other week is being assessed, is waiting to be assessed. I've got one grandson who's on the spectrum, right? And the other grandson is being waiting to be assessed, right? And the one grandson I have every fortnight. And one weekend, he, he was here. And I said to him, I said, he's doing something. I said, don't be silly. Right? He said, I'm not stupid. I said, I didn't say you're stupid. Right? I said, stop. I just said, stop being silly. And he said, give me two numbers. I'll tell you the answer. So I went, okay, two plus two. He went, four. Give me a hard one. I went, okay, ten plus five. Went 15. He said, These are too easy, Gran. He's six years old, and I'm going, Okay. So I'm going up in the numbers, and he's giving me the answers without even thinking. He's giving me the correct answers. Now, <coughs> I'm 58, and even now, when someone says to me, What's 30 plus 48? I'm going, I have to go 30, 40, 40, 70, 78. You know what I mean? I split the 48 up into a 40 and then an 8. So I go 30 plus 40 plus 8. And I'm having to think about it. If I said that to my grandson, he'd give me the answer straight off. Hi, Victoria. I, and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's going to show me up. Right? But my daughter, when she was little, we'd go to the shop and I'd give her, say, five pounds to pay for something. And before the guy had even got the money out the till, she'd be going, that's three pounds something and change. And the guy would look at me and I'd be going, she don't get that from me because I'm as thick as two planks. So don't use she gets that from because it's definitely not a dad either. <laughs> but she was savvy with her money, with her numbers. Hi. I know, I don't even know how to play chess. I don't even know how to play chess. I really don't. I know how to play, is it... Uh, Checkers, where you've got the black and the white circular things. I don't even know the name of that. But I know to play that. But chess. God, I wouldn't even know it. But my other grandson is on the spectrum. He's good with puzzles as well. He's very good with puzzles. And... Things like that. The grandson I have here on every fortnight on a weekend. You buy him a toy which you have to build up. 
he don't build that toy. He won't build that toy. He'll build something else with it. I'm going, wow. You built something different to what it says you should be building. But he does. He builds something totally different to what he should be building. And it's, that's it. Drafts. I can play that. <laughs> I can play that. But put a chessboard in front of me and I'm going, which ones do I move first? You have to move the front ones first. All the front ones forward. I wouldn't even know where to start on a chessboard. Really wouldn't. So, they are very, very clever. Let's continue. Get a barometer of how the polygraph would respond to Seth Rogers, correct? There were what we call control questions. You know, there might be, are we in the state of Tennessee? is today, Wednesday, those sort of things. And those are the control questions that we, we get where we know he's telling the truth. With us is Seth Rogers, Sebastian's biological father. Also with us is the polygrapher who took the polygraph, Kendall Shule, and Tony Mathis, who is helping Seth weave his way through this very difficult time in his life. And uh, Mr. Shull, let me ask you one more question. Isn't it true that you attempted a polygraph on Seth Rogers before this polygraph? Uh, I believe we tried to set one up, and it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't go through for some reason. Kendall Shule, again, did you find Seth Rogers to be cooperative? I found Seth to be extremely cooperative. He did everything I asked him to do. There were absolutely no problems with the interview that we had, as well as attaching the uh, the components and getting good physiology to show that he showed no signs of deception on this polygraph. I did a numerical scoring, as we talked about before, that showed that he passed. I also ran two algorithms through the computer that showed that he passed. I even went a step further when I got home and had another retired FBI agent that I knew come in and do a, what we call a blind scoring of these charts, not knowing whether who it was, what it was about, whether he passed, whether he failed. And he also agreed with my opinion of no deception indicated. Back to Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's dad. Isn't it true, Seth, that you tried to take the polygraph a time before this one and it didn't work? What, what happened? I was on prescribed medication for nerve I've got, I've got a pinched nerve in my C5 and C6 that's causing pain down my right arm. So they put me on prescribed medication for dealing with the pain and trying to get it to relax. What med was that? It was cyclobenzaprine, which is a muscle relaxer, and gabapentin, gabapentin, which is a nerve blocker. Seth, you have been the subject of so much hate online. I don't understand it. Um, I've got a stack of printouts of what people have put on Insta and Twitter and Facebook and blah, blah. For instance, this one says, we had a meeting this evening and one of the moms, her daughter is an intern and works with Nancy Grace. She said a rumor is that Seth failed the polygraph, total fail. And now Nancy's team is doing <laughs> damage control. Nancy was cussing because she was in a, quote, pissy mad mood. She told them polygraphs are not reliable. And so we have to be fair and say it's inconclusive. Nancy's team was mad. They don't like him because he was rude not long ago and they refused to cover for him. This doesn't, A, we don't have an intern, but this doesn't even make any sense. We knew all along from the beginning that Kendall tried the poly, that you were on the muscle relaxers, and you volunteered to do it again. All of this is true. This is just one of hundreds of people attacking you. Why, Seth? Why? Why do people get death threats for looking for their kid? Right. So it was a second polygraphy talk. Fair enough. We, I had a feeling this was a second one because of how long it 
took her to come out and talk about it, right? But he's took it, and it's all clear. Chris, Chris, if you can hear me, unless I have to really scream at you, he passed. That's P-A-S-S-E-D. Passed. Where's your proof that you have passed? Right. So curious if Sebastian... Yes, he did have a cell phone. He does have a phone. No, I'm not going to say did. He does have a ph cell phone. But guess what? It was left at home. Yeah, apparently he didn't have internet. He fell asleep in the first one, yeah. That was because of the medication he was on. You know what I mean? That's what we all said. If he fell asleep, it wasn't because he's guilty. It's because of the medication he was on. He said himself, that polygraph he took, the sec that one, it took him three to four hours. If you've, if you've been slept, Sleep deprived, right? You're not eating properly. You're on medication, and you're sitting in a chair, wired up, right? And it's taking so long. You, you just okay. I'm gonna go. You just fall asleep. So, but he did. He has got a phone, but he didn't take it with him. It has been checked. I don't know if they've got the phone back or not, but it has been checked for anything. It was not uh, lined up for the internet. He didn't get internet on his phone. All he had on his phone was to call out, call, to make calls and to receive calls, text messaging, and I believe they said a calculator. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to put this one. Let's make this crystal clear. <laughs> love it, love it. All right. Like, like what types of people he was communicating with on the phone and online? Would be... Well, the only online time he had was when he was with his father. Right? And he would play the games on his dad's PlayStation. But he played under his dad's name. Right? So he only played against people who his dad had on there. Who he trusted. Friends of his dad would phone him up and say, Do you know your son's logged in on your account? He'd go, Yeah. I'm sitting by the side of him. I'm watching him. You know what I mean? He didn't have it set up where he could talk to people. So he didn't have headphones. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. <laughs> he didn't have headphones. So if anyone was talking, he'd hear what was being said. Do you know what I mean? So... His dad would not let him just go on and leave him there. It, it was on his account. So, and he only had certain people on his account who he played against, who he trusted. He knew those people. Right? So, <laughs> so, yeah, um, <coughs> I wonder if he had friends in his neighbourhood that he would hang out with regularly. <clears throat> well, his mother was asked this question. Like, did he have, did he go to his, any friends' houses? And his mother said he was never invited, sort of thing. Can't remember the exact word, but she sort of like said he wasn't invited. Right, so he didn't have anyone he hung out with after school. 
did you do? And when he's when they sit in that interview and Chris says he'll have so many friends when he comes back home. He will never come back home to you, Chris. Never. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Not heard that one before. I'm going to remember that one, man. It is. Do you know? Do you, do you know, Cleve? You. you know what he asked Father Christmas for at Christmas? Do you know what was the one thing he wanted for Christmas? Friends. He just wanted a friend. Now that is sad. That is sad that a 15 year old is asking Father Christmas for friends. He's 15 years old, but he's got the brain of a like 10 or 11 year old. And but it's sad that a child is asking Father Christmas for friends. That is sad. Yep. He had no one. <coughs> yeah, just wanted a friend. Right, found out though, when Chris first met Katie, right, she had some cats. Sebastian loves cats. Guess what CP said? It's either the cats or me. Guess what she did? Got rid of the cats. I don't know how I think I'll repeat it. Right, then, good thing I've done. So, um, do you know that neighbourhood they're building up next to them? Where all the, um, oh God, construction work is going on. Right? They knocked on the door of a neighbour, one of the neighbours there, one of the people that live there, and they said, they, they have seen Sebastian walking up and around that neighbourhood, but they hadn't seen him that day. So he used to go up and around that neighbourhood. So to be honest with you, you don't know if he had met someone around to meet up with him. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't know. There's so many weird people about today. You don't know who to trust, do you? You don't. You don't know who your next door neighbour is, who the person is just standing in the queue next to in the local grocery store. You don't know. So I, I just feel so sorry for this flag. But we're just going to finish this interview off. I think we've got about six minutes left. So it finishes. In prison, Derek turned himself into the best jailhouse. Oh, they're black? Yes. Okay, where were they found, Lauren Conlon? So it has not been disclosed exactly where, but Goodlettsville, it's 12 miles from Nashville. It's part of Sumner County and Davidson County, Tennessee, depending which side you're on. So it's kind of nearby Sebastian's home. Back to Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's father. You can find him online at hashtag Sebastian Strong. There is a GoFundMe to support him in his efforts. He's had to hire a private investigator, and he goes hours and hours and hours, day That's after lovely. day after day, searching for his son. He most recently returned from that rest stop we showed you where there was an alleged sighting of Sebastian. That's GoFundMe, Finding Sebastian Rogers Family Support. Seth, what, if anything, have you been told about that pair of black sweatpants? That they are not related to, the, to my son. Do you know where they were found? I know that they were found at a particular park. A park. A park. Do you know if they were the right size? No. Who told you the information about the pants? Uh, I received a text message from uh, the, the uh, law enforcement the detective over the case. Yeah. 
Okay, question, do you know what condition they were in or if any DNA analysis was done for touch DNA, hair, fiber, anything that relate back to Sebastian? How did they suddenly decide, oh, yeah, these aren't his? They said that the size was wrong. Ah, the size was wrong. What, wasn't he last seen wearing black sweatpants, as we were told by the Proudfoots? Correct. Seth, when you learned that sweatpants had been found but were ruled out, according to law enforcement, how did that make you feel? What did that do to your will to keep searching? And they said they didn't, that those didn't belong to him. It just reinforced that North Carolina, my son, was there. Sebastian Rogers goes missing. Mother Katie Proudfoot leaves the family home to be with her husband in their travel trailer while he goes back to work around the Memphis area. While Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers, and an army of volunteers continue to look for Sebastian, Katie Proudfoot says she is concerned about leaving, but defends the decision to leave by saying her son could be anywhere and they are looking everywhere. Katie Proudfoot doesn't know when she will return to her home. Katie Proudfoot has reportedly not gone back to work. We reached out to the Proudfoots asking if they would share their current location. The Proudfoots saying for safety reasons, they are keeping their location private. Joining us, an all-star panel, uh, Tony Mathis is joining us. Right, we got about one minute 37, so we'll finish it there. Right. Um, she... Because someone put her out where she was searching, that YouTuber had to search elsewhere. Because this YouTuber goes out on a, either on her own or with a group or some others. Some of them might, might be her mods, right? But she, she goes out. She doesn't tell anyone where she's searching, right? Only those with her know where she's searching. But that night when she found them black pants, someone found, put out where she was searching. So she's not being able to go back there. She's had to go elsewhere. Yeah, I thought there was a ranging. When they went to that Harley Davis, Davis shop uh, two weeks ago now, yeah, it'd be two weeks ago now, there was arranging uh, some sort of motorcycle rally, right? So what's happened with that CP? Where's the rally? And we know it wasn't happening because you know what? A YouTuber phoned the store up and they asked about you. And they said, yes, you was in there. And yes, you was looking at bikes. You had the T-shirts on. I know you was not arranging any motorcycle rally. So stop BSing everyone. If you don't want to go to a vigil, just say, we don't want to go. Right? Don't make up complete, utter rubbish. Because you're spotted elsewhere and then make up these stupid stories, which no one, by the way, unless we've got some CPKP supporters there, right, believes. Now, as I said, if I, was, if I had the biggest uh, YouTube panel going, I would not have CP on there. I'd have Katie up on there, but I haven't got the time of day for that, for CP. I really haven't. Yes, yeah, so there is one being, there has one being, one has been arranged, and you don't have to have a motorbike. You can have a car, anything. I don't know when it's for, but there is, um, I'll find it. It's here somewhere. They've got a prayer vigil of a, a vigil of hope on the nineteenth of May at six pm. 
Long Island Church. 3031 Long Hollow Pike. If anyone in that area can make it, please turn up. It'd be nice to have a turnout because there's a lot of Facebook pages, we're being told, will not let them share these, these sort of information on their pages. So the last vigil they had, they only had a handful of people there because they'd been putting the message on their pages, wasn't allowing, wasn't allowing people to be on the page. Oh, I'm gone. So, I'll take this down now. Hang on. Just stop that. Oh, I've took it off altogether. Bye. <laughs> um, a lot, yeah, a lot of Facebook pages wasn't, sh wouldn't allow it to be shared. Why? I don't know. This is a, a young child, a 15-year-old autistic lad. Why would I let people pages? To me, it doesn't make sense. Hold on, let me just get to my comments. Right. I'll give it back to the mouthfeet. Yep. <laughs> I like how you're dressing up them words. Right. But, yeah, there is one arranged. I'll see if I can find out something about it. Uh, I'll put a post on one of the pages. Uh, I don't know if you all have seen this one on Facebook. But there is a new page. If you haven't been in there, please. It's called St. Rogers. This is a picture. Okay. If you're not already a member, please go and join. Um, I'll put some up there after I finish my live. Someone come if there was some sort of rally or something being organised. I'll just put it out there. If anything, that's the page they will be able to tell me. Because it's something Seth was arranging. Right. I don't know when it is. But I did hear that. But otherwise, I don't care. I could have 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100,000 people on my platform and I wouldn't want that piece of S on it. I wouldn't. And if he's listening in the background because I know there's people in the bushes. Right, if there's people any if he's in the background or anyone else is in the background who knows that piece of S let him know. I don't care what I what he thinks of me because I don't care. I don't think much of him either. But I have Katie on. But at the end of the day, I just want to see that Katie is okay. And like I said, if it hadn't been for that bit of a duper's delight on that first interview at the very beginning, I would have believed everything she said in that interview. But she did, a, she did duper's delight, and so did he. So did he. They both gave that little smile like when it shouldn't be a smile. You know what I mean? So I just think it's oh god, take my headphones off now. I just think it's sad that a young lad has no friends. Right? And if it's true what the neighbours said, how he used to call him, what he called him, 
R-E-T-I-R-D. That is disgusting. I don't think he actually did use the power spray on him. I think he probably had a hose. You know what I mean? And a hose. Probably hosed him with the hose. But I don't think he did a power spray because a power spray would hurt him. And if he hit the body, it could it could cut into the skin. But from what they were saying, from what the neighbours were saying. So I think it's more likely a hose he got him with. But even so, a child who's autistic is not going to take a while to getting hosed down. And then being called that R-E-T-A-R-D. You know what I mean? And if he's using, if he uses that language that he used on that interview with the web sleuths, how he was, on, how he was like there, and on that phone call, he had the other night, the other week, whatever that was put out, then it's disgusting. And I don't know if I've got that phone call. I don't know if I've got it on, on here. I think I did share it. Come on. Let's do my heading. Go right down and see what down. Oh, God, come on. Right, now, I'm going to put this on. Because this, if this is how he spoke in the house, and Katie wants to know her son walked out that door, well, this is part of it, Katie. Really? Hold on. Yeah, it was him who called him the R E T A D. Oh, he's oh C P step. Yeah, they're all as bad. They've got so much disregard towards that child. Right, but I'm going to, if you're going to hear this and I understand, just walk away for a couple of minutes because it's absolutely vile the way he spoke to this woman. And fair just for her answer. Listen, no, you, why, why are you so upset? You want to. Why are you so upset? Because you don't fucking And why listen. wouldn't you have your boots on the ground? Why wouldn't what do you, you mean boots on the fucking ground? Why? Well, honey, don't you know what that means? Oh, uh, yeah. Calm your tears. It's okay. I can't wait for this to be over with and we I find out and we get all the answers. Because when we do, let me ask you a question. What? When we get the answers. When? What? what? You want me to apologize to you? Listen, are you going to go public and apologize? Let me tell you something. Are you going to go public and With apologize? With your mouth, it'll be a cold day in hell. Woo! Exactly. Oh, Until yeah. you tell me the yeah. truth and stop being a narcissistic piece of shit ass, it's all talk, talking to me like that. Well, oh, my it. gosh. You don't listen. Why are you being yelling, honey? You're because right. you don't listen. No, you. Why are you so upset? The way you want to. Why are you so upset? Because you don't fucking And why listen. wouldn't you have your boots on the ground? Why wouldn't you? What do you, you mean, boots on the fucking ground? What? Well, honey, don't you know what that means? Oh, uh, yeah. Calm your tears. It's okay. Calm. I can't wait for this to be over with and we I find out and we get all the answers. Because when we do, let me ask you a question. What? When we get the answers. When? 
what? What are you going to apologize to? You? Listen, you're going to go public and apologize? Let me tell you something. Are you going to go public and With apologize? With your mouth, it'll be a cold day in hell. Woo! Exactly. Until you you're tell me the shit. truth and stop being a narcissistic piece of shit asshole talking to me like that. Really? Oh Dang my it. gosh, you don't listen. Why? Not good one there, right? Now, I'm sure she was the one who was doing that nice and nice phone call with as well back in March. I'm sure it's her. I'm going to have to find that out. Check that one. Is one vile, yeah, size 14. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know what I want to shove up his rear end. But they've really got to start putting some pressure on them too now. And that won't work probably we say Ying is wrong and Ying is wrong. What do you mean by that? They, none of them liked that child. None of that family liked him, liked uh, Sebastian. Do you know, they went on um CP's parents took the grandkids to Disney World once. Yes, yeah, she's the one who, yeah. They took the grandkids to Disney World. Except for Sebastian. Because apparently, he's too much of a handful. Right. My granddaughter. Right. She's the one. She knows how to handle her brother. He said something once here. I had him both here on the weekend on a Saturday night. And I think it was Sunday, Saturday evening or something. Or Saturday afternoon once I got him back home tomorrow. Ellis was in the living room and he said something. And as he said, he turned around and walked out the living room. And my granddaughter said, just you wait there a minute. With a hand on her hip. And then she's saying, no. I'm going, oh my lord. Yeah. I don't like none of his family. Look how his sister, Chris CP's sister, was speaking to Sebastian that time at that party on that video. Right, how she was so short tempered with him. You know what I mean? There's ways of answering she could say no, Sebastian, they, they can have another go, but no, Sebastian, they can't. It's not like that. Or something like that, she said. But you you just say, Sebastian, they can have another go if they want, or they don't have to get the 200 if they, don't, if they can't. You know what I mean? Just the way she answered him. But I'll tell you, that lad is a double... Double, uh, what is it? Double ganga, um, uh, whatever. Is a double of Sebastian. The double. I heard that. I heard that, but then I also heard she doesn't work in the sheriff's office. So I don't know. I don't know what's true. What isn't true there? So, I just feel sorry for Sebastian, and I'm, I, that is mother, I feel sorry for Sebastian, because his mother shows a narcissistic, evil, vile piece of C-R-A-P, S-H-I-T, over her own son. She does work for them. Now, it says in one interview, 
I was watching a you, it was an old interview, and it said how they phoned law enforcement, uh, police, up, phone 911 that day. I went, I'm sitting there going, huh? no, they didn't. They didn't phone 911. They phoned the sheriff's office. But apparently, I also heard the sheriff's office, their, their phone system opened up until 9 p.m. 9 a.m., sorry. 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning. So, but on that um, dispatch call, right, that was 6 45, 40, 45. So, would that be from the dispatch call? Would that come from the sheriff's office or would it come from? Any other department? I don't know how your police set out will work because here you phone nine one one. Uh, they put you. They say please ambulance, whatever, and you say police. So they put you through to the police, right? And that's it. And they put you through to the police in your area. She's the one and the sister gang of music. Yeah. I watched that video of Nina. And I hope and pray he never gets to see that little girl again. While this case is going on, he's not going to get anything. He's not going to get his, little, his girl, not even for visiting. Not while I've got a missing child from their house. Plus the fact that he's at work five days a week, so who's actually going to be looking after this little girl? Because Katie works, well, she's not working at the moment, right? So who's going to be looking after this little girl? The grandmother? Possibly. Because I understand it's the grandmother who really wants this little girl. It broke my heart as well. It really did. And it took me a while to watch it. I've seen clips of it, like, but it took me a long time to, sit, to actually sit down and watch the video. I don't know what the woman's name that works in the sheriff's office. I don't know. It's like, I, it's no, I couldn't even phone up. Say I phoned up the sheriff's office. I couldn't even phone up and ask them what time their, their emergency calls phone systems are turned on. It was seven. I wish that is my one prayer now. They've got to do something because this is getting... He won't, Tracy. Right? Unless you've got a judge like they had with Adam Montgomery. He goes, yeah, okay, we'll give you your daughter. Without any checks being done. But it's heartbreaking, and I have. I might even send her an email and just say, Look, how I run a little YouTube channel. Uh, because what's that organization, the tribal uh, group that she should be in touch with? You know what I mean? They will help her. Yeah, no one has ever said an name, it's only spread that relative works there. And I heard that she doesn't work there, so I don't know what to believe. As I said, if I, even if I could phone the police, the sheriff's office up, they wouldn't tell me 
if she worked there. That's private information, you know what I mean? So no one's going to be saying anything. Yeah, the native thing. But she, she, I hope she's got them working for her. Because they'll never get that little girl while they've got while they got the case. No way will I get will I get her. So I'm just gonna put oh god I'm just doing it again. I'm just gonna put this this clip of a video up that I've got because I like to see this clip. Come on. Let's go here. Oh, God. I love this. Energy in this child. Wow. I mean, that was like one pin. Uh, and then I but I just love the energy in this. I don't know. I don't know, but and I'm not going to say anything because I've got no proof who it is, what her name is, or I thought it was Melissa. But it may not be so. No, well, he's got a CP case open. He won't get. He won't get his daughter. He, he won't. Because you got to have one sick judge to give him. Because to of his daughter while this is open well this is on you know what I mean so I I just can't get over Katie no I've heard a lot about that no I'm going to have to go and listen to that do you think they look nice in orange, though? Do you think KP and CP will look nice in orange? But there's so many videos I need to really sit down and watch. And I just don't have the time sometimes to do it. So, <laughs> can't go. <get it. laughs> I think that look nice in orange, don't you? I think orange would suit CP. But they definitely know more than they're saying. And he keeps saying, just wait till the truth comes out. Well, tell us the truth, Chris. Tell us. Instead of saying, wait till you the truth comes out. Well, you know what? 
I'm fed up of hearing you say that. What about you telling us the truth? Yeah, I thought it was just that. I'm so juicy, Jules. I'm sorry. It might be moving back and forth from my mic because I keep moving away and there's a certain angle I have to keep my mic at so that I don't keep getting in and out, in and out. But I keep moving. Yep, even better with handcuffs. So, oh dear, I am just so tired now. It's coming to 11 o'clock. So I've got to go because I've got to take my medication and sort this lot out. And I will normally buy what? Well, Eleven AM, twelve PM USA time because I'm covering I'm streaming the live court case of Adam Montgomery. But um So I'll be on at 5 because I just want to, it doesn't start till I believe 6pm, but I, I think I've set it for 5pm to come on. So we can have a quick run through of the case up until, right up to where we went to court and got found guilty. Exactly. Why didn't Katie drive up there either? Because I'll tell you something. Well, I remember years ago now, my dad was ill. Right? And my brother was out somewhere. He's out. He's out, on, he's out having drinks with his friends. And he gets a phone call to the hospital. He jumps in this taxi and he goes to the taxi driver. Hit every red light. I don't care. I'll pay your fines. Don't stop. Just keep going. Right? Now, that would be me. I'd just hit. If I was a driver, I'd be in my car and I'd be up that whatever road it is. I, I believe Seth has been going through a lot. Right, and it's this Mike, whatever his name is, right, he's coming and he's, he's not stopping Seth from doing interviews. If Seth wants to come on YouTube and do a live and chat, he can, right? He's just there to keep the waters running smoothly, right? He's there also to help get on the national news. So this gets out there for everyone nationwide to see this, right? So, um, so if he can do that for Seth, right? And I say, go for it. If you can keep this drama, keep all this drama out of it, you don't need the drama. <laughs> I just got that, Jules. It's not getting paid for it. People are saying, I've heard on YouTube today saying, oh, He's not going to make no money out of it. He's not making any money. 
it's all coming out of his own pocket. All this travelling he does comes out of his own pocket. He's not asking for money. He's doing it because waiting to bounce that check. I don't know. I just say if Seth needs someone on his side, he had the PIs, but like I said, the PIs, he was paying the one, but not the other. Right? And working on a case. Yeah. Okay, she get paid for sitting there doing something, Seth. But he had to pay her to do something and not get any information. Because they was in limbo until law enforcement come back about that video. Right? And about that picture. Right? And um so he told her, look, go and work another case. You've got to bring money in to feed your family, you know what I mean? So she's not a retainer for Seth, but if at any time he needs her help, she will come in and help Beth. Yeah, but it's expensive to have a lawyer, especially on a long term. Right? I agree a lawyer would be the best bet, but it's just too expensive. Unless you can get one pro bono sort of thing. There are lawyers out there that do pro bono. I know there is. I know there is in the USA. Right? So, for that foundation who could help. Yeah, they've confirmed that picture is not Sebastian. That's why I'm not showing that picture no more. And I went on that lady's Facebook page today and there's pictures of that lad in there and he is a spitting image of Sebastian. 